let's do one more example where we're going to be uh, essentially labeling all the invariant points, congruent melting points, regions, phase diagram, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to use the same kind of notation that we worked on previously. So I am going to first um, do all the invariant point and all those exercises, and then we'll go ahead and label the regions. So hopefully you're getting kind of good at that. So congruent melting point right here. I have a congruent melting point right here, congruent melting point right here, and a congruent melting point right here. Um, what are my, I can see here, this solid region to a two-phase solid region here, alpha plus Ti2 nickel. So this is going to be uh, a eutectoid. So what's my symbol for eutectoid? It is going to be a kind of diamond-like figure. So I see a eutectoid right here. So diamond, diamond, diamond. So eutectoid. I have a eutectic, which I believe I have in my box. Let's look at that here. So I have my box like figure right here. So eutectic right there. Uh, what's going on right here? This is a liquid plus this uh, region right here. So I'm going liquid to here to a new phase region right here. So that's a peritectic. Excellent. What about right here? This is another eutectic. So again, this region plus this region, that's a two solid phase region right there. So that's another invariant point. Uh, any others that we can kind of see? Here's another eutectic, so as well. And then again, there's some invariant points here, but again, they're not the kind of peritectics, peritectoids that we've been you know, dealing with and working with uh, in our problem. And actually we have one more kind of hidden eutectoid as well, right here. Solid phase region to a two solid phase region right here. So. That's another invariant point. So, actually, those are the invariant points essentially on this problem. So, uh, again, you're, hopefully you're starting to get a little bit, uh, you know, clearer on in terms of where to find those uh, values and kind of where to see those, uh, uh, how to find those invariant points. So, let's go ahead. We could go ahead and fill. Actually, let's look at one more additional question here. So, I have a sample at uh, 200, uh, uh, 200 nickel and 900 C. I need the degrees of freedom and the concentration and fraction of the phases. So, so 200% nickel or 20% nickel, 900 C. So let's say it's about like right here, for example. So 20% right here. So my concentration not is equal to 20%. So I'm in what type of phase here? So I'm in beta plus this phase right here. So I'm going to call Ti2 nickel be equal to an alpha phase. So What's my concentration in the beta phase? Well, it's just going to be where this line intersects. So it's about like 9. What about here? It's about 31, 2, 3. Concentration in the alpha phase equals, again, I'm saying alpha is equal to this intermetallic. So that's 33. So what's my fraction in the beta phase? Well, it's just going to be concentration of alpha minus C naught divided by C alpha minus uh, C beta. What about my fraction in the alpha phase? Well, it's just going to be the opposite, right? So C naught minus uh, the C beta. So again, if I'm looking at the concentration of the alpha phase, I'm going to look at this tie line right here. If I'm looking for the concentration of the beta phase, I'm looking at this kind of fraction of the tie line right there. So C naught minus C beta, and then I'm going to get my C alpha minus C beta. And again, we've defined those. And there you go. What are my degrees of freedom? Again, in this region, so my D plus P equals C plus 1. C is equal to 2. My phase is here. I'm in a two-phase region, so my degrees of freedom are equal to 1. I could change temperature, but then my composition is fixed. I could change compositions, but my temperature is uh, fixed here. So that's what you're dealing with when you're in the kind of those two-phase regions, right? So you're kind of in this kind of coexistence, this idea that that composition is fixed. So, uh, once you, you get, if you change temperature, you know, you're changing, you know, if I change temperatures here, my composition now becomes fixed. If I change compositions here, then, I mean, my temperature is definitely, uh, if I change my compositions along these lines, then my temperature is fixed. That's it. All right. So, actually, uh, not, yet, not yet, just yet. So let's go ahead and label some of these uh, regions here. So that's always a nice little kind of exercise to do. And we'll do it kind of fairly quickly because I think people have got it at this point. So let's go ahead. So 
I always like to identify these are all my liquidus lines, everything touching around here, so all my liquidus. So this is liquid plus beta. This is, region here is alpha plus beta. This region here is beta plus this phase. This region here is this phase plus this phase. This region here is liquid plus this phase. This region here is this phase plus this phase. This region here is liquid plus this phase. <laughs> Again, you can start to kind of see where we're going here. This is liquid plus this phase. This is liquid plus this phase. This is this phase plus this phase. This is this phase plus this phase. This is liquid plus this phase. And then that's your pure material. And then this is liquid plus this phase. So you can kind of start to kind of realize and uh, draw out essentially the regions of these phase diagrams. So hopefully these videos have been helpful and then you're ready for, and problem set five is going well, and then your exam is going to go smooth as well. So I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.